Okay, so we just looked at Charles Law and Boyle's Law in the Combined Gas Law. Yes, we did look at Ideal Gas Law, but we're not really going to mess with that too much. Okay, so now we're going to, again, let's rehash. We have the KMT, the Kinetic Molecular Theory, um, describing the behaviors of gas and how some of these do not always hold true. And we will discuss that later, like at the end of this slideshow. Dalton Law, that's another one. It's partial pressures. This one's a real easy one, guys. The total pressure of a gaseous mixture is the sum of the partial pressures of all the gases, aka this pressure plus this pressure plus this pressure gives you the total pressure. All right. Air is a mixture of gases. Each adds up, adds its own uh, pressure to the total amount of pressure on us. For instance, nitrogen has its own pressure, oxygen has its own pressure, argon has its own pressure. When you add them all to, up together, you get the pressure of air. Like what's what we have going on right now? Okay, well, 78% of our atmosphere is nitrogen, which means out of one ATM, which is standard pressure, 0.78 of that one to ATM is due to nitrogen. So 0.78 ATM is nitrogen, okay? Um, oxygen, I believe, is 0.21, and argon is, point, is part of the 0.1% or 0.1, yeah, uh, the 1% of all the other gases that are mixed up that make the air. Okay, so let's look at a simple problem. What is the total pressure exerted by a mixture containing two gases if the partial pressure of one gas is 70 kPa and the partial pressure of the other gas is 30 kPa. Okay, so all you have to do is add the pressures together. You get 100 kPa. All right, here's another one. A gas volume that contains an equal number of hydrogen and oxygen ha uh, molecule has pressure of a 0.6 atmosphere. The partial pressure due to the oxygen molecules is what so we know that hydro there are as many hydrogens as oxygen keep it simple one and one one and one is two when you add them up if they go got to go to six divide six in half because there's two of them half of six is 0.3 answer c pretty easy a gas mixture of nitrogen and oxygen exerts a total pressure of 100 kpa if the sample content consists of three nitrogen molecules for every one oxygen molecule, what is the oxygen's partial pressure in the sample? Whoa. Okay, so how do I figure that out? Well, we have three nitrogens, one oxygen. Three plus one is four. Okay. Well, if there's 100, 100 divided by four is 25. So I have 25 here. 25, 25, 75 here, 75 and 25. Oxygen is 25 uh, kPa. Okay, that's simple. All right, let's do a little bit more. No, I'm not gonna kill you guys with this. Let's just do a little bit more. So gases X, Y, and Z are in a closed system at constant temperature, meaning it's not changing, and have a total pressure of 800 torr. So no, no other pressures can get put on, in on it. It's just 800 torr. The partial pressure of each gas is shown below. You've got X, have no clue. Y is 300, Z is uh, 100, so 300 and 100. What is the partial pressure of gas X? Well, if 300 and 100 add up, that's 400. 400 from 800 means there's 400 left. That has to be X because that's all that's left. So the partial pressure has to be 400 torr. Cool. What is that fraction and percent of the molecules are X? So 400 out of 800 is half, and half, percentage-wise, is 50%. All right. Let's go a little bit more. So if I was to throw this into, say, like, um, Boyle's Law. Let's see if we can use Boyle's Law pardon me, along with partial pressures. Okay, so a mixture of helium and oxygen are used in 
scuba diving tanks to help prevent the bends. Um, just a, a real thing about the bends. Uh, what that is, is as scuba divers dive down, they're getting pushed on because there's a lot of pressure as you dive down. And as, um, as you're pressed on, as that pressure increases, um, which we saw uh, in boils, as you push down, the volume goes down. So as you're, as you're diving down, the volume, the, um, the volume of the, <clears throat> the molecules that you breathe in shrinks, like it gets smaller. So you have to breathe in more to get what you originally would. So you actually end up breathing more and they're smaller. So a mistake would be if you get down to the bottom and you're like, okay, I'm just gonna pop up like a bottle rocket, right? Like you just shoot off the bottom. As you rise, the pressure decreases. So you just inhale twice as much as you normally can because it's that small. As you pop up, as you go straight up, that pressure releases, causing the volume to expand fast. And that causes the molecules in your blood to, in a sense, burst your, bus, uh, your blood vessels um, in your lungs, causing the bends. It, it can kill you. It's, it's bad. That's why um, they don't typically like scuba divers to go on airplanes when they're done diving because it can cause the bends. And that's also why they have like checkpoints where they have to stop and level off and breathe normally. They have to exhale all of that that they just breathed in so that as they get up, it doesn't all expand all at once. So it's like slowly letting off the pressure, but releasing the excess amount by breathing it out. Okay. All right. So for a particular dive, 45 liters of oxygen and 15 liters of helium at 1 ATM, 25 degrees Celsius, were pumped into a five liter tank. Calculate the following. We're gonna do one and two. Three, I'll just show you the stuff. Don't worry about it. Okay, so because we have to figure out, first off, the pressure of each one, we have the initial pressure, one ATM. We gotta figure out the ending pressure. So we're gonna use, like I said, Boyle's Law, P1V1 equals P2V2 on both oxygen and helium. When I plug it in, I've got one ATM. Awesome. Makes my life easier. One ATM for both. There's 45 liters of oxygen to start, 15 liters of helium to start. They're all shoved into a five liter tank. So the five liter is going to go on the last part in the volume of the second part. So all I got to do is calculate. This is a very, very simple calculation. One times 45. 45. 45 divided by 5 is 9. So 9 ATM for oxygen. So helium, let's look at helium. 1 times 15, 15. 15 divided by 5, 3. 3 ATM. Okay, so now I got to get the total pressure. All right, the total pressure of the scuba tank, 9 plus 3, 12 ATM. Awesome. From this, I can actually calculate the number of moles using um, R, the constant R. So I know my pressure of the system is 12 ATM. There was five liters. I got to figure out the moles. Here is my constant R. And then 28, uh, 29.8 uh, Kelvin. You don't want to really stick with uh, degrees Celsius. So you just convert, add 25 to 273, you get 298. You multiply this together, so that's 60, 60 divided by this, and you should get 2.5 moles. Okay, so we've got this thing called diffusion versus effusion. So diffusion, this is random and spontaneous mixing of gases. And then you've got effusion, the escape of model uh, molecules through the holes in a barrier. All right, so diffusion, um, that would be like your soda cans. Um, they're diffusing the the air. They're pushing it down into there. Like they're pushing it. You can't randomly do it, but like it's in, infusing. I think I might be messing this up. 
No, it is. I miss, I I flipped up, flopped it. So diffusion is yes, your soda, but like when you pop the top and you go, and all of a sudden you got all these bubbles. It is. No, I was right in the first place. Diffusion. You're shoving the molecules in there. You're making it be bubbleified, for lack of a better term, um, but not bubbleified yet. You're you're making that solution that is filled with gas. Effusion, where it effuses out, it escapes through holes in the barrier or escapes when you go and all of it comes up, that's eff effusion. Now the thing with this, real quick, we're just gonna look at diffusion real quick. Um, just know that smaller gases diffuse faster. How do I know this? Well, helium uh, diffuses twice as fast as methane, because it is smaller, right? Just know that diffusion, if it's smaller, it's gonna diffuse faster. Cause it's like, is this gonna be easier to get through a barrier or is that like a little tiny, tiny thing? The tiny, tiny thing's gonna be easier to get out than the big, big, big fat thing. Okay, that's the best way I can explain that. So real quick exercise, place the following in order, uh, rate of diffusion, slowest gas, um, slowest gas first. So I'm going to find the molecular weight of all of these, and then I'm going to list them in order. So argon is 40. How do I know that, Misko? I looked at my tables, and that is an element. So argon is has a molecular weight of 40. O2 has a 32 molecular weight, and carbon dioxide has a 44 so i want slowest first the the biggest one the one with the most molecular weight is going to be first carbon dioxide then my next one would be argon with a 40 and last but not least oxygen with 32. all right which one of the following gases would diffuse twice as fast as um sulfur triox uh sulfur dioxide so to diffuse twice as fast we need a gas that is smaller Okay, so let's see. Are all these smaller than 64? We've got 2, 4, 32, and 16. Yes. Oh, twice as fast. Wouldn't it be oxygen? O2, because it's 32, it's half of it. Well, no, it's got to be a quarter of the mass of sulfur dioxide. So we're going to look at um, methane. All right, so gas density. This is a real quick calculation. Yes, I know I'm giving you calculations. First, it's partial pressure. Remember, that's just adding all the pressures up. Now we're gonna do density. And this one's gonna be easy, right? So calculating the density at standard temp is a simple conversion problem. It's not that bad. Keep three things in mind. One mole occupies 22.4 liters at STP. The mass of any formula is equivalent to one mole. Remember, gram formula mass. Units of density are grams per milliliter, or I'm going to keep with grams per liter here because we have liters right there. So all I got to get is from a gram formula mass to liters. Let's see. Density of carbon uh carbon dioxide is and we already know that one mole is um 44 grams per mole and one mole of of any gas is 22.4 liters so 44 grams per mole times one mole over 22.4 gives us 1.96 grams per liter simple or this, and I'm not going there. So identify the gas using the mass volume is just as simple. So if a six gram sample of gas occupies 8.4, so six divided by 8.4 gives you your density, is the gas uh, methane or chlorine? So I have my density times it by 22.4, get rid of those liters to get my gram formula mass, I get 16 grams. Okay, which one of these is 16 grams? It is carbon, or uh, sorry, methane. Methane because it's got um, gram formula mass of 16 per mole, 16 grams per mole. Chlorine has 70.9 grams per mole. 
All right, real quick. What is the density of butane? Four carbons, 10 hydrogens. Four carbons, that's 12, 12 times four is 48. 48 plus 10 is 58 grams. I got to get my density. So grams per mole times one mole over 22.4 because I need grams over liters. Moles cancel out and I get 2.59 grams per liter. All right, if a 15 gram sample of gas occupies 4.20 liters at STP, what would it be? So since one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters, the heavier the formula, the more dense the gas. Okay, well, 15 grams divided by 4.2 times the 22.4, because I got to get rid of those liters to get me my gram formula mass. I got 15 divided by that times that gives me 80 grams per mole. Which one's 80 grams per mole? I add them all up. I got 16, 24, 80. Oop, there it is. C. All right, real quick. Uh, real gases. As pressure approaches zero, all gases are uh, approach ideal behavior. But at high pressures and low temperatures, gases deviate. Star this, highlight this, whatever. Like, so you remember it. High pressure, low temperatures. High pressure, low temperatures. You're squishing the gas together, which they don't want to be. They want to be as far apart as possible. You're squishing them together and you're taking heat from them. You're taking their movement. They're not going to perform like ideal gases, just like uh, liquid nitrogen or um, dry ice. Okay. That's why dry ice becomes a, a, a gas so readily. Same with liquid nitrogen why those attractive forces do not exist between the molecules of gas they don't want to be together they want to be as far apart as possible and molecules aren't just points they do have some volume but because they're so stretched apart it's negligible but when you start pushing them together they start to be have volume the smaller the gas um like uh helium versus argon the smaller the gas the weaker the van der waals the more ideal that gas is. So like hydrogen is more ideal than argon. All right, do the worksheet, the green worksheets, gases, Dalton, Graham, and density phase diagram. Um, I think we already did the phase diagram, so don't worry about that one. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, and besides that, I hope you guys have a great day.